concentrated solar power, lighting the path to a sustainable future. Concentrated solar power acts on the same principles of conventional solar energy. It utilizes the same source of energy, the sun, and attempts to increase the efficiency of this alternative energy source. Concentrated solar power converts the energy taken from the sun into high temperature heat, which then drives a heat engine that is connected to a generator using a thermochemical reaction. This solution has begun to gain traction among many countries and there is more research and development taking place to make this a more efficient energy source. Currently, there are four different technological paths that are being advertised as viable concentrated solar power harvesting methods, all of which utilize the power of mirrors to concentrate a large area of solar energy onto a smaller area, which allows for many options and possibilities. Concentrated power systems can be used for powering a small group, perhaps a village-sized establishment, or attached to a grid, and can be used for thermal storage. As mentioned previously, concentrated solar power works by converting the solar energy from the sun to high temperature heat using different configurations of mirrors. Then, this heat is channeled through a generator, where reactions take place that turn this heat energy into electricity. Let's look at the four different methods that are currently being used, parabolic troughs, Fresnel principal collectors, power towers, and solar dishes. First, we'll look at parabolic troughs. In this confirmation, the energy from the sun is concentrated using mirrors that are shaped similarly to a parabola and are laid end to end to create a trough system and placed in rows. There is an absorber tube that is placed in the center of these parabolic mirrors, and this collects the energy, heats up an oil inside the pipe, and the heat energy is then used in a steam generator. This system has the ability to track the sun from east to west to make sure the right angle is maintained consistently. They can also utilize a form of thermal storage to delay the conversion of the heated liquid to electricity. However, currently these troughs still partially rely on natural gas or have steam boilers when there is low solar radiation, and they can be incorporated with already existing coal-fired plants. Next, we'll look at the Fresnel Collector, which relies on thin segmented mirrors similar to the trough design. However, these mirrors are almost flat with very little curvature. This allows for more surface area for reflection and the same amount of area as the parabolic troughs. However, the Fresnel Collector uses two sets of reflectors. It has primary reflectors that are very slightly curved, rather than having a parabolic shape, and secondary reflectors, which are within a stationary receiver above the field of primary reflectors. These secondary reflectors direct the incoming solar radiation to an absorber tube, similar to the parabolic trough design with a working fluid within the tubes. This design allows the absorber tubes to be much larger in width than the parabolic troughs. Next, we'll look at power towers. This technique uses heliostats, mirrors that are capable of tracking the sun and directing the sunlight to a receiver on the top of a tower. There is another fluid, similar to other methods, that is heated and used to generate steam energy, which is then transferred to a conventional generator to convert to energy. Old designs use steam as the transfer fluid, but newer designs utilize nitrate salt because it is a more efficient medium, or the, the use of air because of its high temperature and ease of handling. Finally, we'll look at solar dish systems. These play once again on the idea of a parabola and use this to concentrate solar energy. Using the dish shape, the solar energy is reflected onto a receiver mounted at the focal point above the dish. They have the ability to track the sun as well, and the heat energy collected is utilized directly by an engine mounted on the receiver. One benefit of concentrated solar power is that its use does not rely on non-renewable fossil fuels. Unlike coal, oil, and natural gas, sunlight is in unlimited supply, and we do not have to worry about using it up and depleting Earth's resources. Another benefit of concentrated solar power is that its use does not contribute to climate change. The burning of fossil fuels releases greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which creates a greenhouse effect and warms the earth, which in turn disrupts ecosystems, causes a sea level rise, and increases the chances of extreme weather instances. Since concentrated solar power does not use fossil fuels, it does not contribute to global warming. Additionally, the machinery that concentrated solar power systems are made of closely resembles that of current power plants, so concentrated solar power systems can easily replace current power plants without wasting resources and burning fossil fuels through the manufacturing of mechanical parts. Concentrated solar power also reduces air pollution since the burning of fossil fuels releases per particulate matter into the atmosphere, often creating smog and other forms of air pollution. Using concentrated solar power instead of fossil fuel burning technologies mitigates this problem. There are a few requirements for establishing concentrated solar power technology. 
For one, the land and equipment must be available. This includes around 1,500 acres of land, tens of thousands of mirrors, and a tower that holds a light receiver. Another requirement for this technology is money. Building concentrated solar power systems is a very expensive endeavor and involves a higher upfront cost than most other power plant systems. Costs can be broken down into investment costs, operation and maintenance costs, and financing costs. The capital investment cost makes up four-fifths of the total cost. This cost for the proposed concentrated solar power systems in South Africa is set to be more than 900 million US dollars. In addition to the high cost, since concentrated solar power is a relatively new technology, it's perceived as risky for investors, who are thus less willing to invest money to build concentrated solar power systems. Moving forward, we must make clear to investors that the benefits of this technology outweigh the risks. While concentrated solar power is beneficial to society and the environment, companies that use fossil fuel technologies do not have much reason to invest in solar power. Thus, we, thus, we must increase incentives for companies to establish this technology. One way of doing this is to put a tax on carbon so that the greater a company's carbon emissions, the more money the company will have to pay. This tax will cause companies to be more inclined to incorporate a concentrated solar power technology that will reduce their carbon footprint. There are a few different criticisms for this method of alternative energy. First is the problem of intermittency, in which energy is obtained is not constantly in supply. This is the same problem many critics have about other renewable resources. Another criticism stems from the idea that concentrated solar power is not efficient enough to supply energy to machines, such as appliances, that need to be run consistently. However, solar energy is optimal for other uses in, such as in emergencies. It is also a viable source of energy for peak times of energy consumption. Another criticism that concentrated so solar energy faces is complications with storing energy as well as developing the most efficient systems to obtain the maximum energy possible. The most used way to store energy is batteries. However, they, need, they would need to be consistently replaced, which dec decreases the e efficiency of this energy source. Lastly, there, there has been the issue of transferring the energy over long distances. Most of the areas where solar energy is harvested, harvested from are not in high energy demand locations. So the energy needs to be transported to these locations, and this can decrease energy efficiency as well. There are also a few economic criticisms of this energy source. The main issue that people argue is that solar energy will be expensive to implement. Concentrated solar power requires the development of different equipment, including accurately placed mirrors and reflectors, as well as troughs, dishes, or solar powered towers. Another reason this energy source is expensive is because concentrated solar panels require large areas of land in order to capture the sun's energy, so land must be bought and mapped before construction of such solar panels. Thus, most private companies cannot afford such projects and also because there are no direct profits to be made from such energy projects. Riverside County, California is well known for their production of solar energy but even the county supervisor stated that they talk about all these huge jobs and long-term benefits to the county. But the truth is, it's very short term. So there are many, end, end quote, so there are many controversies regarding renewable resources and long-term job creation. There are also controversies regarding how much consumers will ultimately be paying once more solar panels are developed. There are some economic, these are some economic criticisms that this alternative energy source faces and must overcome. In March 2013, Abu Dhabi's Mosdar company opened the world's largest concentrated solar power plant. This plant cost $600 million to build and was the first concentrated solar power plant in Abu Dhabi. This plant is powering a number of homes in the area and has been shown to offset 170,000 tons of CO2 in the atmosphere each year. There are many areas around the world that are also considering investing and implementing concentrated solar power, including Africa, particu particularly South Africa, India, China, 
and more countries in the Middle East. 